Hello everyone, GM, GM. Welcome to the Changelog this week. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team, and today I've got Jacob with me. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing well. Let's get started. Let's do it. Let's, I mean, let's talk about Coliseum. Friendly reminder for everyone who is interested in the Solana Global Hackathon put on by Coliseum, uh, the Renaissance Hackathon, as it's called. You can find all the details on coliseum.org. Talks about all things hackathon, the the dates and uh, some of the prizes, the different tracks. And one of the really cool things that I like telling and reminding people about the hackathon is everyone who submits and is a uh, track winner for any of the hackathon tracks, they're eligible to join the Coliseum Accelerator, which is this really cool like Y Combinator style accelerator for the Solana ecosystem. Tons of mentorship, additional help with... Um, doing project reviews, and hopefully getting some additional funding. Not to mention the Coliseum Accelerator will also uh, help you get some more additional funding directly. So friendly shout out to our friends at Coliseum. Yeah, and just a quick tip. If you are building in Coliseum, talk about your project on social and build in public early um, because that's what gets the judge's attention of your project and will make it to where they're looking for your project whenever they look at the results. Um, So do that early talk about your projects and like actually showcase what you're building. We'd love to see it. Like feel free to Absolutely. tag us on it. Um, moving on to what the proposal of this week will be. Uh, this is Simni129. This is uh, proposed by some people at Jump or the Fire Dancer team. It's just an update to Alt-BN1286 syscalls. It's uh, adding some error codes or simplifying the error codes so that we'll have a better developer experience on the other end of understanding what went wrong whenever using this alt BN 128 call. Now, I don't believe this call is currently activated on mainnet, uh, but when it is with this, we'll get different error codes and you'll be able to tell what's going on in your program when you call this error, this syscall. Uh, so it's a great one to have. Uh, I think Nick, you asked me right before this, you're like, why is this in SIMD? It's just error codes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so syscall error codes are governed by consensus, um, not other error codes, like if you're running your own program, but syscall specifically are. Um, so that's why it has SIMDs. Gotcha. Good to know. Let's go ahead and shift over to the commits this week. This is this one is the coolest one. Merged in just one hour ago onto the main branch of the Agave client uh, by John Shankway, the man, the myth, the legend. And one of the things that's been happening on uh, Solana recently is people have been struggling with sending transactions via the CLI client, specifically with uh, deploying programs. So this is one of the many changes that are in the works or have already been implemented to help ease that pain a little bit. And specifically, it's for sending and confirming transactions in parallel. So it can actually send transactions a lot faster because it does a way better job at actually parallelizing the transactions that the, the CLI client's actually sending. Yeah, this is an awesome change, and I hope this is one of many that will make sending uh, transactions via the CLI, whether or not you're deploying programs or just sending from one person to the other, easier overall. Uh, Another commit this week is, this is another commit under the when restart uh, SIMD. Uh, So there's a SIMD going over how to properly decide which is the heaviest fork and which one to automatically restart from. Uh, that's currently in discussion. I don't think it's been pulled in yet. But when uh, on the ONSA team is doing a lot of work to one do some of the work that is not uh, required, or it's required for one restart, but it's not like going to change everything. Like this can be part of the CLI, so you can very quickly find the heaviest fork, understand what's going on, uh, and better basically debug the cluster. Uh, so this is a cool thing. Uh, I think the all the commits around wins to restart, which is a hilarious name, is gonna, is really cool as well. Would love to see the SIMD come to consensus at some point in the future, though. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is a lot of people are adding stake weighted QoS uh, peering connections between RPCs and validators. Uh, currently, the way is a little bit difficult. There is going to be a guide out at the time of this video release on how to do that. Um, but the, the way you do it today is a little bit difficult where you're having to basically choose what stake weight to apply to different IPs or different RPCs via, I think it's like the stake override flags, as well as um, there is another flag that you have to run on your RPC, but it only sends it to your validator. This one makes it a little bit easier to where it also will send also to the leader. Um, not just the value that you choose, so you have a better chance of getting included in the block. 
Yeah. And then Web3.js, we've got the tech preview number two. If you recall many months ago around the breakpoint time, Stephen Lucher and the Web3.js team um, from Anza, they released tech preview number one at breakpoint. Stephen did a phenomenal talk, amazing stageman. And he did an awesome talk that talks about what the new Web3.js is going to look like and released uh, tech preview number one. Now tech preview number two has been released uh, just a couple of days ago, and it's full of all sorts of new additional changes, some of them breaking from tech preview one from the way that I read this change log. And one of the really cool things about this is, is we talked about Create Solana Program, the amazing tool that Loris from Anza put together. And the tech preview number two here actually starts using uh, create Solana program within it. So you can actually get a full like end-to-end -end solution for Web3.js things and also fully generate clients for uh, JavaScript-based clients for your on-chain programs. In fact, uh, there's a link in here for some of the auto-generated core programs like system, memo, and, and uh, account lookup tables, which is really cool. Yeah, so if you're interested in trying it out and improving the developer experience for the new Web3.js, like please report anything that you find that is like kind of confusing as an issue on the Solana Web3 JS uh, repo. That way we can make sure the developer experience is the best as possible when it's not a preview. We don't want it to go live and there's something that's really confusing and that now that's kind of stuck because now you have to make a major version to make that change. Uh, so yeah, try it out. Give us our feedback. Um, make this better for everyone in the future. Uh, and then on the research of the week, there is a new guide, on, and there's actually a set of guides on how to optimize your compute usage on Solana. Uh, so this is a really good to follow guide to understand like, hey, you have a program, it uses X amount of compute, um, and you since you're using priority fees, you're paying for every compute uh, to run that program and get the best user experience possible on Solana. Well, if the compute is lower, you pay less or your users pay less. So let's figure out how to optimize it. Um, so one of the things is like, there's very simple changes. It's like, hey, if you're doing some like base 58 encoding in your logs for logging public keys, don't do that and use you know, like concatenation or the um, the key dot log function. Um, that will use like an order of magnitude less CU overall. So this guide will go through many different ways of how to lower the CU on your programs. Definitely check it out. See if there's any easy wins that you can have for a compute optimization, optimization in your program. And then moving on to this week's Stack Exchange League. Um, so this is what we do to showcase like, hey, these are the people that have gotten the most reputation week by week. So we look at the top three. We have John Chinkway. We have Yan, which is a new person. Uh, I haven't seen them uh, up on this league yet. Uh, we have Jonas and Burger Bob. So shout out to all of them uh, for making the top and helping out with developer support on the Solana Stack Exchange. Because you know a lot of people are asking questions in Discord. If you want them to be able to just Google the results, answer on Stack Exchange. Yeah, and I guess that's it for this week's change log. I hope you guys had a good one and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Right. Adios. Bye.